Hello everyone and welcome back to Fish Den 365. Today it's going to be all about junk fishing. Before we get into the video, hit that like button. Please subscribe to my channel and we'll get right into it. So the first thing is, what in the world is junk fishing? What does junk fishing mean? Junk fishing is a, is a term that bass fishermen use that indicates that you're using a lot of different things to catch fish. All of the tackle in your tackle box, for example. That's why it's called junk fishing. In one minute you might be throwing a spinnerbait, the next minute you might be throwing a jig, then a plastic worm, then a topwater lure. And so there's a time of the year when junk fishing becomes probably the number one thing to do. And that is right now, that is around the spawn. So pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn, especially post-spawn, is junk fishing time. This is when junk fishing shines. It's one of my favorite ways to fish because you get to fish every little situation and you get to fish a lot of different techniques. It's really one of the ways, my favorite ways to fish. And it, and it really can be during, during the spawn, during pre-spawn or post-spawn. And the reason for that is not all the fish are doing the same thing at the same time. While some bass are spawning, others are still in pre-spawn and some are already post-spawn. So you have fish in different modes, they're doing different things, and that allows you to be able to throw different baits to catch them. And that's what junk fishing is all about. It's a situational fishing. You just fish the situation that, you're, that is facing you at the time. So you might notice some shallow reeds right off the bank. You throw a top water to them, maybe a, a, a frog or something like that. You get a little deeper off that bank, maybe pitch a plastic worm or maybe a lipless crankbait through some, through some uh, milfoil beds, this kind of thing. So that's junk fishing, using all the different uh, junk or tackle in your tackle box to catch the fish. And it's a fun way to fish because you get to do a lot of different things and they all work. It's just a matter of where you throw those different baits and knowing when to pick up a spinner bait versus uh, lipless crankbait versus a top water, that kind of thing. So in today's video, I'm, I'm doing some junk fishing. You're, I'm going to narrate the video as we go along. We're going to play some good music along with the video and do a little bit of narration. And uh, I will explain what I was thinking and what I was doing to catch the fish. I catch a number of bass, largemouth bass. I also catch some pickerel and I also catch some sunfish, some bluegills. I was just doing junk fishing for multiple species, but it's the same idea. So from that point of view, take a look at the video. Remember, subscribe, hit that like button, and we'll see you on the water. So I was up in Pike County, Pennsylvania, and I had two and a half hours to fish. I decided to start with a Lucky Craft gunfish. This is a shallow water Pocono Lake, and I wanted to establish if there was going to be a topwater bite because I love topwater fishing. But it quickly became apparent to me that it may have been a little bit too windy and wavy for the gunfish, and I decided to pick up a trout magnet here just to see the activity level of the sunfish of the bluegills to see if I can catch a quick bluegill. The area that I'm fishing here usually has a good population of bluegills and it didn't take long before I got one. As I was approaching the shore, I decided to pick up a mouse lure here. This is a ninja lily mouse that's made by Savage Gear. And I started throwing it near a stump and I got blasted at the stump right here. It turned out to be a nice large mouth bass. This told me that top water could work during the day, which made me very happy because I love throwing top water lures. And he ate the bait quite well. As you can see, it's deep in his mouth.
So after fishing a little while longer without anything more on the mouse, I decided to pick up the ultralight gear again just to see what the size of the bluegills were in this area because I know in the past they were quite large and I was curious to see if there were some big bluegills here. So I caught this pretty bluegill but then it was right back to throwing the mouse. In this case, it was a chain pickerel that wanted it. Next up, I decided to pick up a square bill crankbait because this water here was just a little bit deeper than some of the surrounding water and I quickly hooked up with another chain pickerel. Back to the mouse. I was just throwing it to the shore and then hopping it from the shore into the water wherever I could. Quickly hooked up with another large mouth here. And then my very next cast led to a very surprising largemouth. It was a good sized 5.9 pounds. Five point nine. Ah, that's a nice fish, baby. That's what you call a shoal to provide. At this point, the sun was on its way down, so I decided to turn around and start to fish my way back to the ramp. 
and I began throwing a swim jig along this bank. It's the very same bank that I was fishing in the other direction, but I thought I'd try some different baits along the way back. And it wasn't long before I hooked up with a bass. few casts later and I was hooked up again, except this time it was a chain pickerel. As I got closer to the ramp, I decided to pick up a lipless crankbait, which can be a dynamite bait on this lake, just to see if I can't, couldn't pick one up on this bait. And I immediately did. All in all, not a bad two and a half hours on the lake.